tomorrow will be for Ray and, and Sydney their final acceptance into the Oblate Order for the rest of their lives. Let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these servants of His, Raymond and Sidney, whom He has called to follow Christ in religious life. I help, was helping some sisters with youth ministry in my parish, and um, the kids started to ask me when I was going to become a priest. So instead of me asking them, it was the reverse, they were asking me. So I started to think about it, you know, and again, it was nothing dramatic or, or, or instantaneous. It was something that I thought about for years before I even started to apply. For me, I wanted something that would make me happy, the success that would make me happy. And I believe, for me, the success that would make me happy is to be a missionary, is to be an oblate whereby I can be able uh, to help others and that others may also help me to attain that union with God. I, I thought I was too old, you know, at, at 30, 32, you see on all, the, on all the flyers and all the posters, all the website, we're looking for young men. Well, when you're 30, even when you're in your late 20s, you don't think of yourself as a young man. One of the most obvious changes or differences is that we're getting older candidates. So they have a little bit more life experience. They've had time to deal with a lot of personal issues. So some of those things that normally would surface even during their theology years uh, are pretty well taken care of in the pre uh part of their, their formation. Upon talking with my, my own parish priest, he thought, I should start looking into religious orders because he himself felt diocesan life for him was, was non-communal and it was sort of a lonely life and he, he saw the way I interacted with people and he, he, he just saw me as living in a community. Um, so I started to think about that. There were two things that I, I was really convinced of when the vocation was coming. The first thing was I wanted to be a priest. The second thing is I wanted to join a community. I went up to visit the vocation director in Lowell, Massachusetts, um, Father Jim Irving, um, and I met a really good community there in the Contemplative Mission Center. Father Bill Sheehan, Father Irving, um, and uh, Father Roger Roy, and Father James Dukowski. So it was a really good group of guys that I met. And Father Roger Roy was very key in, in me really saying yes to the Oblates because he was uh, the one who would be around in the evenings. He was the one who was not busy because he was a retired oblate. And we would sit and we would talk and he would tell me about his life as an oblate. And, and he would just share some personal stories with me. And it was very encouraging to me and, and uh, very warm and hospitable to me. And, and so I gave it serious consideration because I looked up to him. Uh, and and, and, and uh, he passed away while I was in the novitiate. And I'm actually receiving his cross tomorrow when I make my perpetual vows, so that's very special to me. Receive this cross, a symbol of Christ's suffering and death. May it be a sign of hope and salvation to you and to all the people who you will evangelize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What I've found for the guys lately, and, and especially for Sydney and Ray, they, because they've shared this with me, is that they are really looking forward to it. They're excited. They can't wait. Uh, and I think, uh, it will be a, a time for they to experience a, a, a full acceptance into our, into our religious order. And hopefully that too will be a liberating experience for them to be more involved and take more responsibility within, within not only our house but within the Oblates and to continue to, to see how a valued person they are. I'm excited because this is what I've always wanted. When I joined the Oblates, I wanted to be an Oblate for life. And that, uh, that dream is coming to a realization tomorrow when I uh, profess my final vows solemnly. But it's also a challenge because I realize it's not just about what I want, but how am I going to live it? Uh, because, you know, uh, the vows it's not so much professing them as much as the way we live them. And you know, that's what has been able to challenge me. It's like, am I really going to be faithful to this? And you know, I have resolved, I've said, yes, I'm going to try. And I know God will always be there for me, helping me. But I think when they find the Lord and they really do fall in love and, and, and believe that by following this life, they will, they will find life there, there is no better thing.